So, I have a new toy to play with. <laughs> As some of you may know, I have been dabbling in film photography lately. Just a little, not super seriously, but just kind of, like I said, just dabbling in it. And uh, I found out very quickly that while getting film developed is not super expensive, and once you, of course, once you find a place that will actually do it, getting it scanned to digital is. And so, my solution to this problem was, of course, to go out to eBay and uh, pick up this thing. This is a Konica Minolta uh, negative and slide scanner. This is from about 2004 or so. And, uh, well, it's, it's old, but as I understand it, it was pretty top of the line at the time. So I'm hoping this will, this will uh, work well enough to get decent scans. And uh, the specs certainly seem to uh, suggest that it would. So, what we are going to do today is we are going to test this thing out. And so it is that I have an extra computer set up on my desk because this thing, uh, while it is from well into the Windows XP era, it uh, does not support. It is not supported on Windows 7, I believe, at least from what I've read, because the drivers are not digitally signed. So I have set up an old computer here, which actually, because I'm an utter glutton for punishment, this is actually running Windows 98 Second Edition. <laughs> it's uh, running on this uh, Dell Dimension 4100 down here, and uh, as it happened, I had an easier time finding a Windows 98 license than a Windows XP license. So I uh, set this thing up, and for those of you who I know are going to cane me in the comments for this, I do know what a modern OS is, I know the dangers of running an old, unsupported OS, and generally I know what I'm doing. So you don't need to uh, tell me how you think you know more than me. Please and thank you. <laughs> so, I've got the scanner software installed on this, on this uh, machine here, and so we are going to test out whether or not the uh, manual to this thing is correct in stating that this software will run on Windows 98. And uh, you can see I've got classic screensaver set up on this machine just because I can. <laughs> Even though with an LCD I suppose I don't really need one. So that flashing light I believe is supposed to mean that this thing is still warming up, but it's been on for a while. It's been doing that for a while now, and so I don't know if maybe Maybe, I don't know if it really does take that long to warm up, or for whatever reason it needs to be connected to the computer to do it. But, so what we're going to do, is we're going to connect this USB cable, and we're going to find out what uh, blows up. <laughs> oh, let's see if I can actually get a decent shot here. That would help. Hey, remember that dialogue? <laughs> Oh boy. Remember the days when you had to insert your Windows CD-ROM to get your drivers installed? <laughs> okay, the requested CD-ROM is now in the drive, and so we will go ahead and if I can operate this trackball with one hand, not to mention my non-dominant hand. Okay. Things have basically disappeared, and so maybe, maybe this thing will actually work. I think it doesn't look like it's doing anything, so it might have actually installed the driver. Let's um, let's find out. Let me switch hands here so I can actually operate this thing. Uh, I'll come up here. Yeah, I can't open uh, Device Manager from the Run dialog on this. Uh, we have an imaging device, and sure enough, there it is. So it looks like Windows is happy thus far, which with 98, that's saying something. <laughs> the driver actually installed right on the first try? What a freaking concept. <laughs> Our light's still, scan well, still scanning, still flashing on the scanner. Let's see if I can actually talk. Um, I don't know. I think it, I, I don't know if it just takes this long to warm up or what, but... Uh, I suppose maybe we'll uh, jump off here for a second and uh, come back a little later thanks to the magic of video editing to see if this thing is uh, happy. Okay, we have returned and uh, oddly enough, I'm not sure why this is, 
but uh, sliding the door open on the front got it to quit flashing. So, I don't know, I thought it was supposed to stop flashing on its own and then you were supposed to open the door, but uh, seemingly this, it looks happy so far, so we'll see, uh, we'll see if this actually works. I also took the time to go ahead and as I do this, and I scramble my hands here, and went ahead and mounted some negatives in here, in the adapter, which I think I got them aligned right even. <laughs> How's that for value added? <laughs> And so we are going to find out if this actually works. So let me actually change hands rather than scrambling them because this Logitech trackball here is not easy to operate backhanded. We're going to go ahead and open the software. And we get this little thing here. And we're going to... Oh, which one do we want to do? I think we're going to start with the easy scan utility. Error 42, set up starts, close the scanner front door. Okay. And it begins flashing again. And we shall press OK. Oh, I hear noises. That's a good sign. Usually. See if this thing actually uh, does its thing. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. Oh, well, the splash screen's gone around. Okay, we have instructions. Set film in the holder or APS adapter, then set in the scanner. So, their English isn't really great. Actually, that's some of the better English in this software. So we're gonna go ahead and open that. And we're going to, let's see if I've actually got this in. I think, I believe you're supposed to push this in until the scanner grabs it. I thought that's how it's supposed to work. There it goes. Okay, so now we have a selection here. Whether we want color negative, black and white negative, color positive, or black and white positive. We have color negative, so we're going to choose that and click next. That is too amusing to watch. That really is. <laughs> okay. So what do we have here? Well, we've got some uh, we've got some images. There were only four negatives in that strip, so five and six are blank. Oh, let's see. Can we actually? I don't think we can actually view these bigger, can we? That's going to annoy me. Um, I think we'll just take this. Uh, we'll take this image here. It looks like a decent enough image. Uh, these these photos, by the way, were uh, from my recent trip to Niagara Falls, to uh, as one of my attempts at testing out my uh, Minolta camera, my Minolta SLR that I got, which I might have to show that in a separate video because I don't think that's appeared on YouTube yet. Um, what do we want to do? That's I don't know if we want to. We can reduce dust, we can reduce grain, and we can do auto image correction. I think we're going to. I'm not, actually not sure how these are going to look when they're scanned, so we'll turn on the dust removal. And I'll turn on grain reduction, too. We'll give this some work to do. Why not? I think we'll take image number one. And so, what we are going to do, we're going to really give this a, a, uh, give this a, good, a good workout. We're going to save it highest resolution. We're going to scan. Um, save it to my documents, that's fine. Oh, it can even save JPEGs. That's a good idea. Uh, medium compression will be fine for this. Uh, we'll just accept that name. Adjusting focus, it says. Pre-scanning. The 
The window has disappeared. Scanning 106. Boy, I think it moves slow when it needs to. Is that thing actually still moving? I might actually still be moving. Oh, there it goes. Have our little progress bar on the screen here. This is probably going to be a little bit, being that I told it to save at highest resolution. I might put a marker in the uh, video description telling you where to skip to if you don't want to watch this thing, um, watch this thing dry paint or whatever. <laughs> I am surprised that it has gotten this far under Windows 98 without crashing anything. <laughs> Let's take a moment and appreciate that. Pushing it back out. Processing, it says. This is probably where it's doing the auto dust brush and all that fun stuff it does. So if it's going to run the machine out of memory, it's probably right about here that it would do it. Oh, come on. There you go. Processing data. Okay, so as if it wasn't processing before, it's now processing data because that's totally different. Scanning complete. Continue. Oh, I think we can quit. Oh, I just pushed my uh, thingy out, which means I can probably pull that out and set it aside. Okay, so let's see how our image turned out, shall we? Okay, now that the scan has completed, let's take a look. I've got actually two different images open at the bottom here. You can actually get in close enough that you can see it. I have the image we just scanned on the scanner here, as well as the scan I got back from the lab, because this role I actually did shell out the cash to get scanned professionally. So we'll start with the one from this scanner, which I will say other than it looks like it's a bit underexposed, which frankly might have been a problem in the original image, as I've, I think I trusted the camera's automatic function to this, automatic uh, exposure to function to this, and I'm not 100% sure that it's working quite the way it should. So it's possible that the uh, underexposed nature of this is actually in the original photo and not the fault of the scanner, although I could probably correct it if I went with the non-easy scanning route. But I would say this scan looks pretty darn good. Now for comparison, let's open the professional scan. Now this one, it looks like actually they've tried to correct the exposure in this one because this one looks real bright and kind of, the sky looks a little washed out. And uh, But the big thing I notice, and I've noticed in a lot of, actually most of the scans I've gotten back from these guys, is it, the picture looks like it's got a, like a light brown tint to it. Whereas, on the scan that I did, the colors look a little bit more true to life, I would say. It might still be tinted a little bit, but I'm not sure. I'd have to, I might have to play around with this in GIMP or something and see what I can do with it, see if I can brighten it up a little and see if, you know, maybe then the cast will become a little bit more apparent or... Ah, I don't know. Either way, I'm certainly satisfied with the result. And uh, I also note, the resolution that I got off this is actually ever so slightly higher than the one I got back from the lab. That's probably that's because I didn't pay the lab for the highest resolution they had because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> I didn't go for the lowest one. I went for the one in the middle for this roll. So, uh, but now I might uh, try rescanning the rest of the roll uh, at some point 
and uh, and rescan some of the other rolls and see if the uh, see if those color casts go away because it'll be interesting uh, to see how everything compares. But in the meantime, I think we have definitely determined that this scanner does work and does in fact work with Windows 98. So mission accomplished. Thank you all for watching, and uh, maybe there will be some more stuff uh, coming soon about this whole film adventure of mine. So uh, stay tuned for that.